Hi everyone. Uh, this is my last video for rational functions. I am going to work through a word problem that involves a rational function. So it's nothing too messy or hard to graph, but it gets back to some what do the horizontal or vertical asymptotes or zeros, anything like that, tell us in the context of a word problem. So the first thing here is to try and sketch a graph of this function. This function is inputting the price in dollars that a store is charging per gallon of milk, and it's outputting the demand, basically, the number of gallons that they'll sell at that price. So thinking about reasonable domain, let's see, P, price should not be negative. So I don't want to see quadrants two or three. Number of gallons should not be negative. So I think I only want to see quadrant one. Okay, so if we go through the list here, uh, we are going to have a zero. What does that have to be, 80? Yeah, I think that has to be 80. So if P is negative 80, we have a zero. So it's way back here, so I'm not really going to want to see that. But just for myself, I'm going to say somewhere back there, there's a zero. Um, we have a vertical asymptote at P equals zero. So this is the uh, P axis, and this is the N axis. And we have a horizontal asymptote at uh, n equals 5. OK, so this would continue out here. And again, I don't want to see this side. But in terms of figuring out what this looks like, this is telling me that my arrow is going to start near this. I'm going to have to cross. So I'm going to head to negative infinity on this side. And on the opposite side, since it's all multiplicity one, I should be heading for positive infinity. So it gives me a starting point here in quadrant one. And then no intercepts, so I'm not going to come down across the x-axis. It's just going to do this. OK. Ah, so I lied to you. No intercepts to explain either. None of them have any meaning. But we will talk about the asymptotes. And we will plug in one value to find a meaning and do a little bit of solve. So. Explain the meaning of the horizontal asymptote. OK, so here's what you're supposed to see. This isn't just about y. This is about x and y. So if I'm going to summarize a little bit more, I'm going to say as p goes to infinity, here I don't care about the negative infinity because it doesn't make sense, n gets really, really close to 5. And then you just want to interpret this in terms of milk. So this is saying as the price gets higher and higher and higher, uh, you're, no matter how high it gets, you're always going to be able to sell at least five gallons of milk, which again may or may not end up being practical overall, but there is this idea uh, where if a, an item is truly necessary, well, I'm trying to remember my econ, I think it's inelastic demand. If an item is truly necessary for people, you will get this sort of asymptotic behavior where no matter how high you raise the price, they have to have it. So there's a certain number of people that will always buy it, theoretically. So again, my explaining here would be no matter how high the price is, there will be at least five gallons of milk sold. So five people really have to have their milk. OK, vertical asymptote. Again, you want to be really clear that this tells you about two things. This tells you that as p gets really close to 0, and here I'll even throw in a little more notation, we're only interested in the fact that p is approaching 0 from the right. So if p is really small positive numbers, n heads off to infinity and skyrockets. So basically what we're seeing here is if the price gets really, really low to the point where they're practically giving them away for free, they uh, demand skyrockets and they're going to end up with infinite demand. People are going to come from all over the world to demand their, their practically free gallon of milk. OK, find n of 2 and explain its meaning. So n of 2 is 410 over 2, which is 205. OK, so this was my p. So if they charge $2 per gallon, this sounds like a wonderful deal, but maybe that's because I've been buying organic milk. Uh, there will be 205 gallons demanded. And that's all I would need there. There's nothing too weird about that point. It's not anything crazy. It's just saying somewhere in here, when the price is $2, the demand will be 205 gallons of milk. OK, last one, solve n of p equals 50 and explain the meaning of your solution. So these last couple are just a little bit of function notation review mixed in. We're going to replace the n of p with 50, which leaves us with a rational equation. 
the first thing we should be doing here is clearing the fraction. So I'm going to multiply both sides by p. I get 50p equal to 5p plus 400. I should then subtract the 5p, which will leave me with 45p equals 400. And then I should divide by 45. Okay, so in the ballpark of 10, a little less than 10. So let's do 400 over 45. Here, off the screen. Oh, it's trying to be blurry. Okay, I'll write it down for you and move it, see if we can get it not blurry. 8.89 .8 approximately. Okay, so this is saying if we want the demand to be 50 gallons of milk. So this was an N, right? If we want the number of gallons sold to equal 50, if we want to sell 50 gallons of milk, we can charge $8.89 per gallon. So this is dollars per gallon. Okay. So that's the idea with the word problems is you should be able to think about the meaning in particular of the vertical and horizontal asymptotes and make sure you realize that that's not just information about one variable. Even though I write it as n equals 5, it's also telling me something about p. This is what n does when p is really big and p equals 0, the vertical asymptote, uh, is telling me about what n does when p is really, really close to 0. Oh, you couldn't see that, but hopefully that made sense. Thanks for watching.